Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to join our SCAM 2022 uh, Spring Quarter Orientation. Uh, my name is Shan Shan, and I'm a member of the uh, admission team. I'm so glad to host uh, this internal event with all of the parents and students. Uh, first, please let me briefly introduce our agenda today. Uh, first part will be introduced by our CEO and co-founder, Dr. Guo. I think many of you have known uh, Charlie before. And the second part will be introduced by our uh, president and co-founder, Yuan. Uh, he leads our teaching faculty team. And he would like to introduce the spring uh, teaching plan and the coming USACO contest. And the third part is related with our 4.0 awards. Uh, we set up the 4.0 awards from last uh, quarter. Uh, we encourage students uh, to make better in their during the homework and tests. And the fourth part will be introduced by Yuan. Uh, he would like to introduce all the yearly contests, especially the coming contests. And then we will leave uh, 30 minutes to Q and, uh, open Q&A session to all the parents and students. Mm. We are so glad to have more than 100 uh, new students this spring quarter. Uh, so please let me uh, play our video first. Computer science and artificial intelligence are tools that will change the future. XCamp Academy is a community dedicated to inspiring and cultivating the next generation of computer science and artificial intelligence talent. XCamp Academy was founded in August 2017 in Silicon Valley by two Google software engineers. The name XCamp was inspired by the variable X, which represents unlimited opportunities. XCamp's curriculum is developed by Mr. Xian Yoshu, a Chinese diamond level international gold medal coach. Our staff here in the U.S. is composed of senior software engineers from major technology companies in Silicon Valley. In addition, we have strong support from international and domestic competition winners. From beginner-level Python to classic C++ courses and competition honors courses, XCamp's curriculum is designed for students of all different levels. We prioritize personalized education with problem sets tailored to each student's needs and an enrollment system that encourages grade skipping. By participating in team-based competitions and facilitating frequent group study sessions, XCamp also fosters an environment of collaboration to build each student's confidence in their ability to code. As of now, more than 80 XCamp students have qualified for the USACO Silver Division and above, including 13 who are in the Platinum Division and 33 in Gold. During the Teams Code Summer Virtual Contest, XCamp's teams won second prize in the Intermediate Division and first place in the Advanced Division. At the 2021 Harker Programming Invitational, our students won first and second place in the advanced group, and the top three teams in the novice group were all from XCamp. Here at XCamp, we believe that students have unlimited potential and can change the world through coding. Uh, all the parents and students are uh, welcome to subscribe our YouTube channel. Uh, we have a lot of events we'll upload on the YouTube channel and this orientation we will still upload on the ch uh, YouTube channel later. Uh, ne next, let's warmly welcome Charlie to give an opening speech. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Shashen. Hi, uh, parents uh, and the students. Um, I'm glad here. Uh, to have our 2023 Spring Quarter opening now. Uh, I'm so glad uh, this is kind of a new year for all of us. In the past two years, we all know it's a pandemic year. Uh, we, as families, as students, had some challenges because most of us need to study school. Hopefully this year, we are back to normal of our lives. Uh, Retro back of 2021, X camp growing very fast. We have more than 400 students now. It was 200 last early last year. Also, our faculty and staff also doubled in the past year. In addition, we host more than 10 education related events. So including contests, high school scholars, and communication between parents and the kids. 
as a community, we want to help our families and the students as much as possible with the kind of events. In addition, they have new courses related, including ground level. Now we have Python and C++. Also, we started a web design class um, from the early this year. A lot of students love that. A lot of students build a very beautiful website from their, for their own. Uh, in addition, upon the request of the students, we started the APCS post class. Um, because some of the students, they would like to take APCS, uh, some in school, but some of them say, okay, we want to get a better score and, and uh, in a um, perfect score. Uh, in addition, you know, after kind of consideration and uh, the request from the parents, uh, we devote more resources on the USACO training. Um, USACO, uh, some of us know, is kind of a, a standard plus um, US national competition on computing on programming. Our students uh, learn from our courses designed systematically on computer programming, computer algorithms, and computer data structure. Uh, USACO is kind of one way to, to check, to see how our students learn. However, uh, this is not um, <clears throat> a final, a complete uh, measure of our learning. From our class, we would like to teach our students how to think, uh, how to solve the problem, how to code, uh, how to learn the whole programming. Again, this kind of USACO training, it's kind of a give us, give our students more power, more exercise and to um, work on the competition uh, and to see, to check what they're learning. Uh, next. Um, you know, during the past four and a half year uh, education and the, especially on the programming, um, we learned and we believe every hour our, our students comes because the students, they are growing. They have a lot of opportunities to learn a lot of things. They come here, join XCAM to learn coding. They lose the opportunity to learn other, learn other things. Also, they may lose the opportunity just to relax, to enjoy, to play. So when we design the course, when we design the homework, when we design our uh, program, we have this in, my, in our mind, we shall provide the students the best class, the best service, the best learning experiences. They spend every one hour count here. Uh, secondly, from the experience, I'm very glad to see, I think some of you know me, uh, I start uh, x -Temp, but also I still are working in Google um, as a software engineer. But during the teaching experience, I had in the past several years, I can see we could change student life by pro providing this coding program. Because we see some students, you know, they like video games a lot. And after study the coding program, they spend more time on coding, spend more time with their friends to crack these challenging problems. Now they learn these skills. They spend less time on um, video games. Also, you know, something that we can see just in three, four, after three, four years, <coughs> they lay a solid, solid foundation. They can pass Google interview problem. I'm so surprised, surprised to see that's possible. So what I say for some students, we may change their lives because we have a layer solid foundation. They can have a solid career. Uh, if you want, they choose as a software engineer. Um, they can have a kind of a solid goal. Also, lastly, I would like to say, with this, our these students, they can change the world with coding. Um, as in Google, I see software is growing very fast area. Also, the AI, AI as the like application of the software engineering, is everywhere now. So this uh, change, this trend, can keep. I think at least 23 years. So for this generation of our students, we give them the tool, the best tool on the earth now. 
they can use this tool to change the world. Next, Shenzhen. Uh, next slide, Natsu. Yeah, next, I will turn to Yuan, uh, my friend and the co-founder of uh, XCamp, uh, to share with you our spring teaching plan. Thanks, thanks Charlie and Shenzhen. So over the next few slides, I'm gonna uh, talk about uh, the teaching plan and also I will uh, also provide some suggestions for how to study and uh, what's the goal as well. Um, so basically overall speaking uh, in XCAM, we have three sections of study and uh, the first section would be beginner level class, which is, uh, sorry, uh, previous slide, please. Okay, hi. Um, so we have three parts in total and the first part is about beginner level. And for this level class is uh, 100, 101 and 102. So over these uh, three sections of a class, we are focusing on uh, growing students' interest and the love of programming and the coding. And uh, we designed uh, um, several very good and uh, very, um, very well designed uh, projects. And uh, we also provide uh, um, the art of programming competition so that we want our students to uh, not, not only grow their skill, but also grow their love of programming. The end goal, we want them to enjoy coding and enjoy the projects. And the second level uh, would be intermediate level, which is mainly uh, from 200 all the way, actually it's over uh, like 400 and also 500 as well. Uh, as long as students are below three or uh, six or one, they all fall into this category. And uh, over this category, we are trying to build students with the complete knowledge system so that they have a very strong uh, sense of connection between different topics. And uh, uh, over this, uh, this period, we want students to take homework very, very seriously and do not leave confusions or weak topics behind. And uh, uh, over time, they will be able to build really strong foundation. And uh, that is not only, uh, not only good for user code test, but also good for their um, study in college in any engineering related topics or majors. And also that is really good for their futures in industry and also in academia. And uh, uh, again, the main goal of this period is about uh, complete knowledge system, not about a uh, user code level, not about uh, uh, anything else. It's mainly about knowledge gaining and knowledge build, build up. And the last uh, section is about our competitive programming honor class uh, section. And over this section, students, you are very, very determined about competitive programming and uh, uh, you will get the user code results purely based on what you paid in your daily study, not from luck, not from, uh, you know, whether you have a good day, mainly from your daily study, whether you focus on every single tiny detail that our teacher asks you to do. And also, uh, it also depends on your initiative to ask questions to get all your confusions cleared. And uh, we also provide a weekly mock tests for high level of students. Uh, they, are, they have really, really intensive schedule and uh, we want them to focus on correction and correction of the test questions so that hard blockers. Thank you. Next section, next slide, please. Um, so over the years, XCAMP is built up the reputation of providing a good user code um, curriculums and also uh, courses and a good uh, coaching as well. And of course, lots of parents come here uh, looking for this as well. I believe lots of students do so as well. But uh, uh, I want to uh, emphasize that the uh, user code is a, is a good thing, it's a good goal, but it's not the only goal. And actually must, what's more valuable is about uh, building up your knowledge system, especially if you are in the beginner level or intermediate level where you are building up foundation. We don't want to, you know, we typically don't suggest students to start user code too early because competition is good, but sometimes it can bring uh, frustration as well if they are not ready yet. 
in that case, if they didn't pass, it's not their issue. It's uh, it's mainly about uh, uh, we don't have enough time uh, throwing enough yet. So in that case, we want students in beginner level and uh, intermediate level, basically all the students below 601, we want them to mainly focus on learning and uh, gaining, uh, especially we want them to clear their question about homework. And uh, of course, if students, they have more time, they want to pass certain level, we also provide uh, good coaching and to help them to get past that. And uh, uh, over the years, we've proved that our curriculum is well designed and uh, uh, we, are in keep, we keep improving the overall structure based on the user code tests, which changed every year. Uh, in, the, uh, in the end of the day, user code is good, but uh, uh, knowledge and the complete knowledge system is what, uh, what is more valuable and uh, is what matters. Thanks. Next one. Um, talking about user code, we are starting to have a combined uh, workshop with competitive programming initiative CPI, uh, which is also uh, who also build up the user code guide website. We have combined section with them to talk about uh, user code uh, test questions right after each of the user code tests. Uh, we've already uh, organized uh, one in the past, and uh, the next one will be in March six. And uh, we will talk about uh, user code all level of questions, including uh, bronze, silver, and gold. And for planting level, we may also organize in the future as well. So in terms of how to join, uh, we will post uh, uh, the, the corresponding information in, on Discord and Google Classroom uh, when it's closer to the date. Thank you. Uh, I guess it's, a, it's an incomplete. Uh, Probably just uh, yeah. yeah. So so basically, uh, again, the overall overall uh, overall uh, spirit here is that we want you to be able to uh, take user code as a side product and uh, mainly focus on build up knowledge. But if you are already in six or one or higher level class, we want you to really really. Uh, commit and uh, we we have a well designed high level, high level classes so that uh, students we can move them around and we also have a dedicated uh, uh, parent meeting talking about this as well uh, and uh, um, in the end of the day you uh, you are getting results based on again based on your daily study and uh, based on every single painful process and uh, if we can bypass that uh, I'm pretty sure you'll get through some certain level uh, sooner or later. Yeah, I think my section should end. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Jen and Charlie. Um, sorry for the um, complete uh, slide. We will pre prepare for the final version and send to all the parents and students later. I think it's already complete. Somehow it's not present. <laughs> the complete okay. sentence. Yes. yes. Okay, so next part will be uh, about the 4.0 awards in the four. Uh, so welcome, Charlie, to share. Uh, thank you, thank you, Yuan, thank you, Shan Shan. Uh, here, I'm very glad to see um, the 4.0 award um, last fall students. Uh, I will not uh, read the uh, name by name, but you can see all here. Uh, we have a lot of students from 101 on this page, um, also 200 and 202. Uh, next one. Here are the other students are from 201 and 300. So for all these students, congratulations. You made a great job. You finished every homework. You complete every test problem. It's really a big challenge. Uh, from last uh, quarter, we tried to recognize these students. Uh, make a perfect score is a challenge. Um, it's not only for the coding. We believe this is a good habit through your whole life. If you do it, do your best. Achieve the best of you. You can do it. We can see a lot of students, they put efforts. They make it happen. We see like a 201C class. There are seven students. It's uh, almost one third of students. They can make a perfect score. 
Uh, we want to say this is not easy, but we will push this to the students. That's also the reason I, I said we want to make every hour of the students learning month count. So that's the reason we want to kind of push our students to reach their potential. That's the way um, we can cultivate our students to have very good habits. When they do something, they do their best. So here's again, the requirements. We need the students to fix to all of the problems. You know, for our uh, class, the homework, we have required problem, also bonus problem. Uh, required problem uh, is kind of needed to mask the content required. For the bonus ones, we know some students, they have the potential, we provide them more, so they can do more, they can learn more, they can practice more. Um, yeah, for the students, we will have a 15 minutes interview to know they're learning, to know they really master the content. Um, uh, also, we uh, give the students not only certificates, uh, but we will give him a, a gift card, you know, for the students, for this uh, age of students, they might be excited to buy something they like. Also, it's the time for learn for them to learn their learning financials, to learn how to uh, handle money, how to uh, use money too. Uh, this quarter, the spring deadline is May 23rd. It's kind of the last week of this quarter. Uh, every student and a parent, please uh, try if you think you can make profit score, please try it. It's a challenge, but it's a good challenge. It will help you to reach your goal. You will feel very good. You know, we have had an interview with the most of the 4.0 students. They feel good because that's a big, big achievement. Yeah, thank you. Uh, next slide. Yeah, I will pass to Yuan to talk about uh, uh, the contest through the year. Yeah, thanks. So, um, so for the most well-known contest uh, called Usaco is a United States uh, Olympiad in computing. So this one will typically happen in four uh, with four times in a year. It's December, uh, January, February, and March. And uh, this contest is mainly about uh, testing students' individual ability to uh, to, pro to solve problem and also to code it. And in March, we will also have a HPI, is a, which is a hacker programming invitation. Uh, it's a team-based uh, competition, and uh, we uh, we have a uh, many students uh, participate in this contest in the past and we have also have students got the first place as well so uh, we will provide a mock test for this competition and also uh, help them form teams as well and in march there's a, another competition which is much harder than hpi it's called proco is uh, held by stanford university and uh, uh, which is around the corner so uh, recently we are helping students to uh, form a team for both HPI and Proco as well. And uh, in April, and actually Teams codes have several times in a year, not only April, I think uh, in summer as well. So Teams code is another uh, partner of SCAMP. Uh, together we've, we've uh, successfully helped them uh, to, hold, to uh, organize competitions uh, in, uh, last year and uh, this year, they will have a competition as well. It also is a team-based competition. Over the years, we found out that team-based competition is a very good opportunity to help stu students to know more about their classmates and also to re uh, really realize their skill have improved a lot in the competition. And uh, with the collaboration, they will build up their uh, friendship and also uh, even boost their interest in programming overall. In July, uh, LIT is a competition come, come, uh, being organized in the East Coast. Uh, I've got the exact name, but basically it's a very, very high end and hard competition, which mainly uh, focuses on individual programming, uh, programming uh, test. And uh, the Turing Cup, which is also called X Cup, uh, X Camp and uh, uh, our partner in China, Xin uh, we will host this together. And uh, this competition actually provides a very wide range of questions starting from beginner level all the way to the uh, national team level. And uh, uh, 
last year we've successfully uh, organized uh, several, and one of them we had uh, more than three thousand participants, uh, mainly from uh, United States and China, and also from Russia and other countries as well. And uh, we would like to provide a very good competition experience so that all the students can get what they want and can make friends. And uh, no matter where they are, and uh, uh, no matter which level they are currently in, they are always being able to uh, prove uh, their study progress with this competition. Uh, and uh, we will hold this uh, periodically. And in September, there's a girls, GPI is a girls programming uh, competition, uh, which I think is also being hosted, but it's hosted by uh, Hacker School. And uh, we encourage all the girls to participate in this competition. And uh, uh, for this GPI, uh, we've had uh, girl students in the past, and uh, we have quite some girl students uh, who started at the uh, X camp with their foundation, and they really built up the foundation and got, got all the way to Plantium. And uh, we look forward to seeing most girls uh, working on programming and uh, uh, potentially going to programming related uh, industry in the future. Yeah, next slide, please. Um, so recently we had the, the Hacker HPI and the Proco, as I mentioned. So um, we are in the process of pre preparing them and uh, registering for them. So for this competition, we would like to uh, have the following process being explained. So first of all, we would like to have all the students uh, from 200 uh, and above to attend the competition. And uh, uh, all the kids, they, are, they don't have any um, uh, pressure to get any award, as I mentioned in the past. We never uh, ask students to, you know, you have to get some certain level. Uh, we always ask them to focus on learning. Uh, and uh, in this case, we ask all students and kids to register via our internal spreadsheet so that we can help them to form a team. And uh, we will have our uh, one adult parent to help them to finish the registration as well. And uh, the third step would be, we will have uh, all those first time students who participate in this kind of a competition to join the um, pre-contest pre uh, info section. Uh, it will be provided by XCAMP teaching team. And uh, uh, we'll have all the students who want to uh, take the test to take our mock test. And uh, the main goal here is about uh, uh, then how to collaborate in a remote environment. And also they need to know when is the time to switch to a new problem and when is the time to help their teammates. And the most importantly, when is the time to ask for help. With these preparation, we, are, we hope they can uh, enjoy the comp uh, competition experience and uh, get the most out of it. And uh, we, will, we will do the, something very similar to for Proco as well. Yeah. Next one, please. So um, starting from uh, last year, we are starting to provide uh, summer camp and uh, winter camp. And uh, this page lists our information about our summer camp registration. And uh, for the summer camp, we have overall two uh, different uh, type of classes. The first type is our weekend class, which uh, is very similar to the spring semester and the fall semester. It's a 12 week online class starting from June the 11th uh, to uh, April, uh, August 28th. And uh, it's online online uh, format and uh, uh, we will provide the same quality and the uh, same schedule as the spring semester and uh, the fall semester. And for students who want to, uh, who want to put in more time and uh, use the summer, which is the most uh, longest uh, continuous time section in their year, in, in a year, we provide the on-site camp as well. And uh, it's a 10 four day camp. Uh, the first one uh, start at uh, July the 18th. The second one start as August the 1st. And the address is in San Jose, the Miti High, uh, High School. And uh, um, so for the summer camp and winter camp, I want to mention a little bit more because for students who want to do musical or do competitions, or uh, even like in intermediate level, uh, the fourth semester and the spring semester is not about preparation of contest. 
is mostly about build their build up their knowledge, build up uh, build build up their uh, their their understanding of the topic. But to get to the competition level, is still there's still a gap there, which is they need to gain more practice, gain more muscle memory, and also they need to grow their uh, sense of strategy uh, in competition. And uh, also in our uh, weekly class, when we assign homework, we always tell them what is the topic today because they've taken a lesson. So the homework uh, should be relevant. In that case, they always know what topics this question is, is uh, related. That makes the problem much easier. But in our camp, we, we no, no longer do that. And uh, typically we'll provide mock tests as well. So overall, is a more uh, comprehensive uh, process for training their sense of competition. And also uh, they have to experience failures and uh, they have to experience the case where they got stuck in a problem for two hours. And they have to uh, do correction for those competition as well to, in order to fix the gap they uh, recognize from the competition as well. And we also push students to do, um, to do summary for of competitions so that we can uh, we can spot the weakness out of the out of the mock test experience uh, so this year we will make the camp experience even better and uh, over the years we have more and stronger and stronger uh, uh, ability to uh, help the students to adjust their strategy as well and uh, this is since this on site uh, it will be, uh, I really recommend students who want to have a good user code uh, score, uh, please try to join the on-site camp. Uh, yeah, it will be a lot of fun and uh, lots of gains. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Yuan. And our recap of the summer camp and winter camp already published on our WeChat video account and the YouTube account. Uh, if some new parents are interested in our on-site camp, feel free to check it or ask our teaching coordinators. Yeah, this is the photo of our last winter camp. Thanks. And now it's our open Q&A section. Uh, if parents would like to ask a question to Charlie and Yuan, uh, feel free to share your name and your uh, kids' class ID so they can answer your question more specifically. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, this is Zhi Yong. So yeah, my son is a new coming student in 601. I have several questions. First, about the camp, right? I saw just Yuan shared for summer camp, there are two camps, camp one and camp two. I'm not sure whether those two camps are exactly the same or they are different. Um, but I, I mean, if a kid wants to participate, right? It's okay for him just participate one or I think two might be different. He can also participate both. Yeah, I think you can answer this question. Yeah, for the parents about the yeah. So uh, it actually depends on the level of the students. So if it's uh, like the highest level, six, such as six or three, uh, then is like the both camps are recommended to attend because that camp, uh, that class, we will prepare students, uh, not in rolling base, but uh, we will keep the progress going forward, and uh, we are shooting for the United States uh, United States national camp. For students in lower level, such as, for example, 601, uh, so we don't have a clear uh, teaching, uh, basically like the topic-based uh, teaching plan yet. That is because we are waiting for the students to, sh to, to wait for the spring semester to start so that we have a clear idea about how, uh, uh, when, when is the, Basically, what's their uh, status when we're approaching the summer summer uh, summer semester? And typically, in the past, we have two uh, two different uh, camp. And this time, since we have a new class structure, so for six hundred one, we are planning for uh, two rolling based uh, class. Basically, means uh, we do not rolling based on two camp, but instead, overall, we want to have students participating in both camp to get the knowledge coverage in the same level. And uh, for lower, lower level classes, we will have a uh, two uh, same camera. 
such as silver or even lower level. So for high level, since this is a new class structure, so uh, I hope I explain this it clearly. Okay, got it. Thank you so much. So basically, you are seeing maybe students kind of wait a little bit, right? Maybe like till the later or maybe after the spring spring quarter or spring session, then he can decide right what kind of the camp he need to sign up. Yeah, I think it will be uh, pretty soon because we want to see the semester start and see the dynamic in 601, 602, and 603. Uh, since it's a, a brand new class system and uh, um, we don't know what's the student's background fully yet. And once it starts running, we will understand more and uh, especially what's the best for them. We adjust every year uh, and also every semester for them as well. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Uh, so then another question about, uh, so since we are kind of new and curious, like if right in any case, if the student like may see the class or remote class, uh, do we have any like a recording? So he can like watch after, afterwards or is there any kind of outline or syllabus that maybe he can prepare before the class actually starts? Yes, we do have the video recording uh, provided. And uh, uh, but even with the video recording, I would still recommend students to try to participate in a live class. Uh, it typically it gaining more takeaways and also uh, the interaction will help capture students' attention as well. Okay, uh, thanks. Hello, I have a question. Uh, my kids is in the 102 class, Caroline. Yeah, so last year we are in the 101 class and we have uh, um, issues about the group study and the TA time. Uh, it's arranged this way. It's always the the TA, uh, TA time is the first hour and then followed by the group study. But actually, no one is in the group study time. T after the first hour, basically, students just left. So I'm wondering for this semester, is it possible the group study hours first and then followed by the TA time? So before students ask a question, they can have time to work on them. Maybe it has some, it will have some discussion. And another reason is, uh, the TA time is too early, it's 6.30 or 6. At that time, kids are still in the after school that they don't come home. So is it possible put the TA time, TA, Q, and, and for the second hour so students can ask a question? Yes, uh, yeah. uh, I think that's definitely possible. Uh, we can arrange for that. I think that's a very good suggestion. Uh, we call it uh, QA hours, office hours, and group study. Uh, we know uh, there are some some class the group study is not really good study. Some students they didn't discuss, didn't get involved. Uh, yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, um, yeah, we will... yeah. We we always like the group study time, but we just find nobody is in the group study as as long as the teacher left students go. So I think yeah. if we reverse this, students will really come to discuss. And then the second hour teachers show up. And by that time, it's uh, 7.30 or after seven, most students are at home. I think that will have the better results. Thank you if you can switch the, the TA time to the second hour, that will be very helpful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your suggestion. Uh, Hello. So, uh, I have one question. Since we are in the East Coast, if you swap to time is later, I think for us it will be too late. Is that uh, any um, record in the meeting? Uh, you mean recording the? Uh, recording the the um the Q and A or the mm -hmm. the group session. Uh, yes, so I hope not too late, but I want I want my daughter also join the class because we have three hour difference. Yes, yeah, we we noticed the issue from West Coast and East. Oh, unless Coast. you can you know separate out the the, the sessions because I know that's not everyone can 
can fit the schedule. But yeah, I do want really my kids to... also join the, the, the class as well, the group or uh, the group session as well. Yeah, yeah thank you. Um, yeah, first for the recording, uh, yes, we are trying. Hi, this, that's uh, a question. Uh, even for the QA hours. Okay, uh, let's just quickly finish uh, this question. The first, yes, we will, we will have recordings. Uh, the second one, we will try to arrange the time. You know, for, if we have two office hours, we, let's see if we can maybe a little bit different to thinking and uh, to help the uh, Easter code. Uh, yes, Yohong, please go ahead. Okay, my question is, how can the kids join the Discord group that you mentioned in the discussion? Uh, yes, so each class, uh, we we set up a Discord group, uh, but okay. it's not uh, not required because some parents have the concern that some kids they might uh, play okay. some games on the Discord. Uh, yes, so uh, the TAs uh, we are and the teachers on the class will help the students who like to join the uh, uh, Discord. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well. So actually now the problem is the Discord server ban all the underage, like uh, younger teen, teenage accounts. So basically the kids cannot access the Discord if they don't like change their age. Uh, I'm in like uh, yeah. the official Discord one, but I'm not in like the single class one. Can you like put them in WeChat or something? <laughs> yes, actually, all the information we will think up uh, in the Google Classroom and WeChat group for the parents to know. And yes, an email. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can well, I ask a question about your uh, the group study? Like, what's the what's what's the goal of the were use of the group study? Like, what what are students supposed to do in in group study? Because uh, as the previous um, parent mentioned, we're on the East Coast and, uh, and the group study, even if it starts early, like um, on the early side, it's 9 p.m. my time. It's basically my, my kids um, go to bed at 9.30, so it's way too late for us to join. Um, so first, I want to know like what, what are covered in this group study? And, and second, is it possible that you provide separate sections for East Coast uh, students? Go ahead, sorry. Yes, let me answer the question. So uh, for the group study, there are two purposes. Uh, also we call it office hour and the group study. Uh, office hour is the, like a, when the students have questions cannot solve the homework problem. So we, the TAs be there to help students to see what's going on there, why he cannot answer the problem, understand the problem, why that might be bug in his code. So the TA helped the students to understand the content and help on the homework. Uh, the second way we try to set up, call it a group study. The purpose is, yeah, the students can be there just to do their homework. If they, have, they can discuss as a group, uh, that's kind of a teamwork. Uh, but uh, as another parent just asked them, some, some class, some students, they might not just uh, um, talk to the TA, ask their question and leave. Uh, then not all the, like the group study time, the students be there and the discuss. Yeah. I see. I see. So, so basically, um, probably th there's no clear boundary between group 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 or uh, a group study and, and TA hours. It's sort of like used as a mixed function under cer certain circumstances. So basically, students can still ask questions in group hour and then they left. Uh, Yes, first. some oh, students okay. have to be there, just join there and do their own homework. That's the kind of time we want to reserve for the students uh, to, to, to do the homework to learn, yeah. Right, yeah, that, that time is still <laughs> a little bit late for us. Yeah. I, I don't know if we're, we're, we're going to join um, for that late um, or, or, yeah, but, but um, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, definitely an earlier option will be helpful. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, we heard that, you know, we try to have most of the students. I know there are some challenges so, of the students from the East. Yeah, we will try our best. Yeah, we're okay. also from the East Coast. So I hope the uh, time will not be too late. It's better to like finish before nine o'clock. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, as the other question, uh, parent just asked, you know, because from our side, most students, they only finish their school at 6, 6.30. It's already 9, 9.30 on your side. Uh, oh. But yeah. if it's a weekend class, is it the, all of the TA classes during the weekday or weekend? Currently, the other TA hours is the uh, week, weekday. Okay. okay. Um, excuse me. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Um, what is the like model or like format of the um beginner class? Like every class, what is the format, the, like model of it? You mean how do we teach the class? Yeah. Um, you know, all of our class now online. Uh, we have you know two hour um instruction online. Mostly uh, weekends we have two hours. Uh, yeah, during the class, the teacher uh, will deliver new content, we'll do some in-class exercise. Uh, also, we may ask the student questions to check they learn well. Uh, then we have homework. Uh, usually takes two to four hours. Yeah, I want to say again, for us, uh, we, we kind of is not a hobby after school course. Uh, we are very serious on coding. Also, we believe only students make efforts, only students do exercise, only students practice, they can only learn coding. So we have a, a very serious homework students need to finish. Normally it takes two to four hours. Then we have a, a full study and a two hours to help students. Yeah, that's kind of a whole teaching structure. Thank you. Okay. Hello, I have one question. Uh, so, yeah, sorry. Uh, so uh, my son has learned uh, Java for more than one year, and uh, he has learned all the concepts in uh, 101. Uh, so do you suggest he like start from 101 or 102 in XCAMP because it's a different language using Python? Uh, uh, yes, go ahead, Yuan. Yeah, yeah I, I want to um, mention that uh, this is a uh, case by case. Uh, Typically, we will also need the students uh, which grade his or she is currently in, and also uh, even with his, uh, with his or her study of the programming con contest, uh, sorry, programming concepts in certain language, uh, their mastery of different level of mastery also uh, matters as well. And how about uh, we can discuss this offline and uh, we can give you more customized and customized suggestion. Uh, sure, sure. So, uh, who should I find? Uh, total. Um, me. Yeah, please. Uh, at our, you can add our uh, teaching counselors, uh, WeChat account or email yeah, to we'll us. Yeah, there. info at scam dot org. Yeah, I can okay. text text in the chat box. Okay, thank you so yeah. much. Yes, actually, we have the placement test for the Java student on Code Forces. Yeah, so uh. After the uh, student finish the placement test, our teaching counselor will give the class suggestion for which mm -hmm. class uh, your, your kids can take. Mm, okay, thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I, have a, I have a question regarding the textbook. Are you going to give the kids sort of a, a handout or follow certain guideline or have a, a textbook for them, recommend for them whatever along the line? So um, all the material in, in XCAMP is self-contained and uh, typically uh, all these material students, uh, they don't have to buy any extra textbooks, but okay. uh, we do uh, release our uh, slides or some notes to students so that they can, uh, it's uh, easy for them, uh, it's, a, it's a very convenient for them to uh, take a look after class and uh, uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Sure, yeah, please go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, yeah, thank you so much for hosting this orientation. It's very helpful. Um, it's our first time to enroll. Um, so I put my son in 101, uh, but um, there was no assessment done before that. Um, I'm wondering if after the first few sessions, if he feel it's either too difficult or too easy, um, is there a chance to switch classes or what, what shall we do? Uh, so typically if student, yeah, Charlie, you want to say something? 
Uh, yeah, I just try to answer this question. Um, you know, at, at that time, we have a goal to help each student reach their potential. Uh, we have the called a skip class, uh, I mean, policy. If the students are very good, and after we test him, he's qualified to move to the next class, I can do it directly. Also, we have the policy to kind of to retake class if the students uh, need more time, you can retake that. Uh, the same like for you, like the first time to this class, uh, yes, please uh, come back after several weeks. Uh, if the students feel too difficult or feel too easy, please let us know. Uh, you may let the teacher know first. The teacher, we will have like, we have weekly teacher meetings. We can uh, get this information and help the child. Okay, yeah. so I will communicate directly with the teachers. Yeah. Okay, great. I want to add two more points. The first point is that uh, um, the best speed for a student is the right speed, uh, not faster or not slower. Basically, uh, even with the same kid in different age, their learning growth, uh, their learning speed or their uh, the level of requirement may change over time and uh, their ability to absorb the knowledge uh, may change as well. So we do very dynamic and uh, we also encourage students and the parents to provide us more uh, more live feedback regarding how they feel about the pace and uh, uh, we are focusing on find the right uh, pace for every single student and reach their potential and uh, the second one would be uh, as charlie mentioned uh, uh, over time we adjust their levels and uh, uh, typically we want students to start with a level that they are comfortable with and uh, over time, if they find the class to be, uh, you know, uh, too slow or too fast for them, uh, please tell us and uh, we will have a proper assessment for that as well. And uh, uh, typically students who want to promote to a higher level class, they need to do really well in the current class. And uh, we will, uh, the assessment may be a placement task. It could also be uh, some higher level of class uh, to try the class as well, yeah. Yeah, thank you. It would also be very helpful if the teacher can give us feedback um, if he notice um, whether a student is um, not like not fit for the class or um, mm. how he's doing. So uh, we would appreciate the feedback. Yeah, thanks. Okay, thank you. I have a question for you. So it's also our first time to take the class. Uh, you mentioned the group study. So how to form a group? Or by, or by default, all the students from the same class are in the same group. I, yeah, could you please explain about that? Uh, yes, uh, currently kind of the, the same class uh, joined uh, the group study, you know, the same group study. Um, we kind of start to try to help students to form like a three, four students to form a, a group study together. But this is not enforced, uh, it's kind of recommendation. Uh, if your child uh, finds several students in the same class, they would like to work together, we notice this will be definitely very helpful. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Oh. Okay, uh, I see a question from the chat box. Uh, the parent mentioned that his, uh, the, uh, his kids, uh, the class is on Sunday, but he has some tournament, maybe one or two times for the entire semester. Is it possible to join the same class on Saturday? Or those two for those two today, yeah. Maybe Charlie can answer that. Yes, um, we have a uh, you know the same level. We may have several classes. As in this case, we have Sunday and Saturday ones. Uh, but um, we kind of advise our teacher to teach the class according to students. The student in his or her class, the level and the progress. So in this case. The progress of these two classes might not be they might not be the same. They might be different. So uh, I think the if it's only one or two times, we kind of suggest uh, read uh, watch the uh, video recordings. Uh, also, the we have materials pre you know, provided after the class. Uh, also, please please come to the office hour and group study time. Uh, so to answer the questions, if any, when you watch the video or when you do the homework. Uh, because if you draw in the other class, the teaching content might, might not be the same. So it might be confused. Uh, to them. Yeah. Oh, uh, I just have a kid that's joined um, XCAM taking um, the CS100. My question is, I just want you, if you can clarify, we've gone to the summer camp. 
So we like to, you know, participate in a summer camp coming up, but we do not know how, uh, how he, you know, it's doing in a CS100. Uh, is there a waiting time to be registered for the summer camp or just pretty much automatic, you know, if, if you're taking CS100 and you already will be entitled moving to register for the CS101 for the summer? Uh, yes, you know, most of our students, they will uh, yeah, yeah, follow the uh, class trajectory. Um, you know, also we, during the teaching process, if some students have some challenges, our teachers and the teachers will help the students. Also, we will let the parents know if they like four weeks in a row, the students cannot finish the homework. So uh, generally speaking, most I think uh, our students, they will go to the next level. They will probably go to 101. Okay, I see. So, so okay, so overall, so you gotta wait for the kid maybe halfway through and see how the progress in the class prior to register for the summer camp. Um, should I just go ahead and register when? Uh... Yes, yeah, now just uh, yeah, so, uh, you can register for the next level, yeah. Okay, thank you. Hey, I have a question about the so I, I read the, the program path and noticed that like um, the the one zero the one hundred series basically use um, Python and but to some point maybe higher level uh, it looks like that you provide a path with C plus um, plus especially for those people who are interested in the the computation um, my my question is like um, uh, if, if if my child um, goes to that path like two, three years from now. Um, do we need to take like some certain of conversion class or this conversion is expected to be self-learned or something? Because I, I don't know how hard it is to switch from Python or Java to C++. Uh, yes, uh, we, Go ahead. Um, yeah, for our students, uh, after they learn kind of almost two years uh, at the class 201, uh, we will help them to transfer, to convert, to learn more on the C++. From the 202, the student will work on all these uh, problems with C++. So for this transition, uh, we extend, we will help the students do this uh, in class. Uh, this transition is not as a uh, challenge as we thought, uh, because uh, mostly you know, we fix the uh, focus on algorithm and the data structures. The student will already have a good uh, understanding. Mm -hmm. This is only kind of a language change. We just uh, teach them the grammar is different. What's correspondence? Uh, some data structure are a little different. What's correspondence? Um, we have students do the transfer. We have no problem. Yeah. Okay. So 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 probably from the uh, the planning perspective, um, let's say my child does want to continue the study. Um, probably in two years, she. She, uh, she, she can expect to um, learn the class that use the C++ programming language. Is yes. that, yeah, okay, two years, okay. Good, yeah. thank you. Yeah, maybe that's for the last question. Uh, Liang Jun, the parents, uh, you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Uh, yes, I have already got the uh, feedback from the Charlie uh, oh, about okay. the material, thank you. Okay, thank you. I have one question. Uh, for the 202, should we take the 202 Python or 202 uh, C++? Uh, 202 is already C++. Uh, 202 already? Uh, yes. Okay, I saw this one level. It seems has both Python and C++. Uh, okay. Yes, we have one level. Now we don't have it anymore, yeah. Okay, thank you. I have a quick question for the hacker programming invitational. You mentioned that only students who are taking 200 and above can participate. Does that include students who are currently, who will be taking in spring term or students who have already completed um, one, two? Um, so we would suggest the students who have already completed uh, can participate. 
but I mean like uh, um, it's not a high requirement. So it's always uh, always good to have students to take a take a take a step on that. But the main concern is that uh, if they start too early and uh, they don't they are not ready for it yet, they may feel frustrated for the result. Then it may not be a very good thing. But uh, if with proper guidance and proper uh, psychological uh, you know support from the parents to help them to to guide them I think uh, the main thing here is to participate and to enjoy the process we are just worried about uh, uh, their reaction uh, yeah so will the so my kid will be taking the the first 200 class in spring would the teacher provide some sample class sample problem so we can have an assessment on whether he's ready or not before uh, there up. are two things that, that uh, he can take a look. The first thing is the HPI hacker invitation. They provide a sample question and uh, uh, he may take a look to see whether it's uh, the right level. The mock test that uh, XCAM provides is more of a more of a harder question. It could be harder, it could be easier, uh, mostly on the harder side and uh, it may not be a right thing to assess. It's more of a more of a way to uh, that the students to try to collaborate. So I would say like the hacker invitation official website, they have a sample question. That's the best thing to verify. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, I think that's all for the Q&A session. Uh, all the parents, if you have further questions, please contact our teaching coordinators uh, or send email to our uh, info or admin at scam.org. We can answer your further question, uh, no matter in Google Classroom, Discord, WeChat, or WhatsApp. Thank you so much, and thank you for joining our orientation tonight. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.